Bono, do you still consider yourself a learner? Well, there's always more things to learn. There's always more things to learn. Uh, more detail about things I've already done and new things which I haven't started to do. Yes. What have you learnt in the last year? I'm not sure on detail, but the different things, yes. Um, working on a new book, I'm thinking to create value, because what happened historically is when Greek thinking came to Europe, time of the Renaissance, schools, universities thinking were in the hands of the church. The church was interested in thinking to find the truth, to prove heretics wrong and to support their belief system. So we developed excellent thinking to find the truth, which has served us very well in science, but culturally we've never actually developed thinking for creating value. Individuals have, yes, entrepreneurs, inventors and so on, but culturally never. Do you think we need that? Absolutely. Our political system would be much better, our economic system would be much better, our personal lives would be much better. Yes, we do need it very much. Is that your mission in life? Well, no, that's the latest book I'm writing, so that becomes a temporary mission, but my mission in life is to get the human race to think better, because I think we've done extremely little about thinking for 2,400 years. What is your view of the state of the world? Are you, are you optimistic? Are you pessimistic I'm, or neutral? I'm optimistic, and if people listen to me, I'll be even more optimistic. What, what, how many people do you think are in your worldwide following, if we could say that? How many people do you think you've influenced well, over your there's, lifetime? Well, there's, there's thousands of schools using my work, and thousands of individuals. I was in India once, and giving a talk, and a fellow stood up. He said, as a student, he was flying to London. His plane was diverted to Paris, he had time at the airport, bought a copy of my book, kept in his briefcase for 30 years. He said at that time he had $3 in his pocket, today he has $3 billion in his pocket. That is 80% due to my book. And I'm always coming across people who say that sort of thing. What are you most proud of in your career? Well, uh, looking at the way the mind works, self-organizing systems, and from that developing additional ways of thinking in addition to the ones that we have. Do you think there are elements of your work that have now merged into the zeitgeist? They're now taken for granted, they're now part of the way we think about the world, rather than that's an idea from Dr. Edward Byrne. I think Burnham. probably, yes, probably. I mean, I, I was talking about uh, uh, creativity in the 70s, now an IBM survey of chief executives has put top of the list of what people want. It wasn't the case in 1970. I wrote a book 1980, the happiness purpose. Today, that's a big theme, happiness. So, yes. You're carrying it forward. Yeah. Have you changed your mind in your career? Is there anything that you, you thought once that you now think was wrong or no. plain daft? No. No, there's things which are more, get more elaborated and more detailed, but there's nothing I would reverse and say, no, I was wrong about that. So, so over 40 years, you've had a singular vision that you, you've built on and made more complex and had more elements of, but essentially it's the same vision. Well, it's like you start off on a journey, and there's, on the journey there's a lot of different places to visit. There's a lot of side roads you can explore, but you don't say, oh, I wish I was on a different journey, no. Uh, what do you think, out of all of the things that you've done, of all the people that you've met, was the, the greatest achievement or the greatest moment of your life to date? Well, it's, it's, there isn't such a thing as that. I'll give you an example. There's a fellow who used to run a centre for very violent youngsters. He started teaching my work to them and showed that for those youngsters taught my thinking, the level of violence dropped to one-tenth of what it had been before, and that's a huge effect. Unemployed youngsters taught my thinking for just five hours. The employment rate increased 500%, stronger than anything he's ever done. So there are huge effects of teaching thinking. Well, why don't you think that you're... Why aren't you part of every single school curriculum in the, in the world? Why, 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 isn't, why aren't your thoughts taught to every pupil in the UK? It's a good question, and I don't know the answer, except education is very conservative, and there's a huge amount of jealousies and so on. But you're right, it should be. And do you think it will be? Do you think that, they're, that slowly yes. but surely yes, I think you so. will win over? I think so. I was in China recently, a lot of interest in China. And China's a sort of place to say, we'll do it and they'll do it. And they put it in every school. That's absolutely true. The University of Beijing has been doing research for nine years of my work, very positive results. And uh, there's 650,000 schools in China, so if they get going, that's a lot of people. It is indeed. And where are you off to next? I'm off to Istanbul this afternoon. And what are you going to do there? 
I'm talking at a conference. Now, it's very interesting that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, had more to say about thinking than any other religious leader. In the Hadith, he says, one hour of thinking is worth more than 70 years of praying. He says, the ink of a scholar is more holy than the blood of a martyr. He says, one learned man gives more trouble to the devil than a thousand worshippers. And in the Quran, there are well over 33 verses directly about thinking. So you could say that Muhammad was really an early proponent of Debono. Well, he's an early proponent of thinking. And in that sense, yes, it's not a particular type of thinking. Okay. I mean, it's, if we consider thinking is the most important human skill, no question about that. And yet, I doubt if there is one university in the world which has a professor of thinking. It's incredible. 